our all new Makeover Mondays challenge, a weekly challenge brought to you by the Paper Crafters Library and Sunny Stampin' Studios. The purpose of Makeover Mondays challenge is to help you learn how to take the ideas and inspiration you find on the internet and make it your own. Now this challenge is strictly a work from your stash challenge. So every Monday I'm going to take a project I found on the internet and I'm going to show you how I use it for inspiration and how I make it my own using supplies from my stash. Your challenge is to do the same, and I'll give you more details at the end of this video. First off, here's today's inspiration piece. It's a wine bottle gift tag that was created by Sharon Harneast on Ellen Hudson's The Classroom blog. Now in this project, Sharon uses a faux dry embossing with die cuts technique to create the main image on her tag. Now for my piece, as you saw in the first picture, I've started with the main project concept, a wine bottle tag. Now as I go through the process of showing you how to make this tag, I'll explain to you the ways in which I altered and worked from Sharon's original wine tag idea. Now on the original inspiration piece, Sharon uses a number 8 tag and alters it to create her wine bottle tag. For mine, rather than using an existing tag, I decided to create my own. So here I have a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock that's 3 inches wide by 7 inches high. To get the tag corners, I'm using this retired tag corner punch from Stampin' Up. Now if you don't have a tag corner punch, you could simply snip the corners, the top two corners of your tag, using your paper snips. So I'm just going to insert the top corners into my punch and punch it like so. So now you can see what that looks like. So there I've got the general tag shape. Now I'm going to take my score buddy, which is just a tiny little scoreboard, and I'm going to score this at two inches. So I've got the top portion of my tag butted up against the edge of my score buddy, and then I'm just using my tool to create a score line at the two inch mark. And then I'm just going to fold it over, aligning the edges. Now for my opening for my wine bottle, I'm using a one and a quarter inch circle punch. And I'm flipping it over and aligning the top portion of this tag in the window of my punch. And I'm just aligning this visually. I'm not measuring. If you want to be really precise about this, you can always use a pencil and ruler to make a mark at the center point and then figure out where you're going to punch it. So there you can see I've now punched the top hole for my tag. So now the next thing is to dry emboss this piece. So in Sharon's original piece, she used die cuts to create a faux emboss look. For mine, I actually want to emboss this. So here I have Stampin' Up's, um, I think this is called the poinsettia embossing folder. And I'm placing my tag inside this folder. Of course, you do want to make sure that you take a look at which side you're putting it in. So I want the embossed edge or the embossed area to show at the front. So I'm making sure that the recessed portion of my folder is the one that's going to be aligned with the front edge of my tag. And then I'm going to fold it closed and I want to align it so that the top edge of the embossed pattern is going to come just below my fold line. And in order to make sure that it's straight, I'm using the lines in my grid paper to help me to help me align my tag and just to make sure that I'm going to be embossing a straight edge. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to run this through my Big Shot. So I've run my tag through the Big Shot with the embossing folder and you can see now I have the bottom portion of my tag embossed. Now because we lined up the pattern of the embossing folder with the fold line rather than the edge of the embossing folder, where the edge of the embossing folder was you see this a little bit of an extra score line there. Uh, don't worry about that though because that impression is going to be hidden when we put a rhinestone border across. So the next step now is to mat this onto another piece and that's a design element that I took from Sharon's piece. I really liked the way she had the tag matted onto another color with the scallop border. So we're going to recreate something similar. So here I have a piece of Basil Hillary cardstock, very similar to Stampin' Up's Old Olive color. And this is 3 and 1 8 by 5 and 5 8 And I want to scallop the edge of it using this EK Success Abstract Flower Punch. Now I had already practiced this on a scrap strip of paper to see where the scallops needed to start and stop so that they looked even along the bottom of the tag. So that's why you see as I align this in the window of the punch I'm not going all the way. I'm going to 
just above the edge of the dotted inside. And then I'm just grasping this, I'm holding it and flipping it over, and then pressing it down and punching the rest of the way. Now the reason I did that, which did look kind of awkward, is because I find with this punch, it doesn't work very well when I punch it this way. I don't have the hand strength to do it. So that's why once I determined where my placement was, I needed to flip it over. So at this point, I'm using this just like you use any other border punch to continue punching the last little bit of my tag. So I'm aligning my pattern or my punched piece with the pattern on my tag. And there you can see I now have my scallop border and it's quite even on the bottom. You, you have these two scallops that are, the, that are in the center. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to sit it on my tag or sit, sit my tag on top of it like so and I want to make sure that my tag can still fold when I have this piece on there. And then once I'm happy with the placement I'm going to take some of my Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Glue and this is a liquid glue that I always use whenever I have um, I'm trying to stick highly embossed pieces of cardstock or paper. It just grips a lot better than regular double-sided adhesive. So I'm just sticking the top portion down. I was holding that in place. I'm now flipping it and then I'm going to stick bottom half of this down. So there you can see I now have my tag attached to this backing piece. Rather than creating a greeting flag I wanted to use my Mary and Type stamp set from Stampin' Up! because I really like the way they have the different sizes and combinations of text with the little flourishes on top. So I'm using this Peace on Earth stamp. And what I'm planning on doing is layering different punch shapes to create my greeting on this. So here I'm inking my stamp in my um, Rich Cocoa Memento ink from Sukaneko, and I'm stamping it onto a piece of craft cardstock. I'm then taking my wide oval punch from Stampin' Up, centering this in the window of that punch, and then punching it out. Here I've already punched out a label using Stampin' Ups, I think this is called the Designer Label Punch, and I've punched it out of that same Hillary cardstock. So before I layer my wide oval punch onto my designer label, I want to sponge the edges of my wide oval label using a little bit of this rich cocoa ink and a wedge of stamping sponge. I'm then going to use a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals to center and stick this onto the label. And then just to spruce it up a little bit, I'm going to be using a few rhinestones. And these are just some rhinestones that I picked up at the dollar store. I'm going to use the two smallest rhinestones to go above and below the greeting. So it's going to go right in the center of this little design here. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to stick it onto the front of my wine tag using another couple of Stampin' Dimensionals. And I love using um, dimensional foam whenever I'm creating labels because I just love the extra height and depth that it gives the, your project. So I'm sticking it so that it's there's about a half inch border all around. So now the last step is to mask this extra line that was generated from the embossing folder. And for that, I've decided to add a row of rhinestones. Now, I'm doing a row of rhinestones or rhinestone border the tedious way, one at a time. There are other um, products that have rhinestone borders and you can use those if you have them. Even if you only have a clear rhinestone border, you can always color it with a marker like a Copic marker or a Sharpie marker. So I'm just going to be taking my rhinestones one at a time off my sheet here and then placing them all along the edge of my tag. 
So there you have it. This is what my finished wine tag looks like now that I've finished applying my rhinestone border. You can see that it bends at the top and then all you do is just slide it onto your wine bottle and you've got a really nice hostess gift that you can give during your holiday gatherings. So now you've seen in this video the process that I use and that I follow when I'm drawing inspiration from projects that are on the internet. You've seen how I look at the projects and how I think about how I'm going to alter them and then how I implement my different changes. So now it's your turn. Here's how the challenge works. So if you're watching this video from somewhere other than my blog, in the description section of this video I've put a direct link to my Makeover Monday challenge number one blog post. So all you have to do to participate is to create your own project using Sharon's tag for inspiration. You're then going to post your project on your blog, or if you don't have a blog, you can post it in an online photo gallery like Flickr, or if you're a member of Flickr Stampers, you can always post it in the gallery there. Then you're going to come back to my blog to the Makeover Monday challenge post. Scroll to the bottom of the post and you'll see an in links button. When you click on that button, there'll be a space for you to add your name and then the direct link to your blog post in the URL section. Now make sure you link directly to the post that has the project in it or to the direct picture in your photo gallery and don't just link to your general blog or to your general online gallery. So make sure that you link directly to the post where you put your challenge project. And you do have you have until Sunday, November the 6th to create your project, upload it, and link it. And I encourage you to visit the links of other people that participate in this and check out what they've done as well. On Monday, November the 7th, I'll draw one name from everybody who's participated and the winner will receive the kit and instructions to make the Christmas Jingle Tri Shutter Mini Scrapbook Album that you see here. And the kit is something that we have in our Sunny Stampin' store. Now to open this album, you untie the ribbon and then you flip over the front cover which looks like so. And then when you flip over the other side you can see here this is what the center of the album looks like. So to open the album the rest of the way you just grasp the sides, you pull it open and that's where you see the tri-shutter mechanism revealed. There's a tri-shutter portion on this side of the album and a tri-shutter portion on this side of the album and then in the center there's this insert and this is a new addition to this um, design of this album and when you flip it up and open you see there's room for a couple of more pictures. And once again, all you have to do to enter is create your own project based on Sharon Harnese wine tag, using that for inspiration, and post it on your blog. Link back to the Paper Crafters Library blog, and winners will be announced Monday, November the 7th. See you on the blog!